If you've spent any time here on my channel, you've probably heard me talk some trash about qualifiers. You might even know why. It's because I generally prefer to work with broader, softer, gentler tools than the qualifier. But one thing that we've never actually done is to explore situations where we might need to use a qualifier and look at some of the potential alternatives. That's what I want to do today, looking at three examples of tasks that we would commonly pull a qualifier in order to accomplish. Let's take a look here inside of Resolve and talk about qualifiers and their alternatives. So here on my first shot, I have an ungraded shot. All I've done thus far is what I do at the beginning of every project, which is to set up my color management and my template node tree. So I've got labeled nodes set up in a configuration that I like, but nothing's actually happening inside of them. If you want to learn more about this process that I undergo for every project I take on, I've got dedicated videos on these subjects that I encourage you to check out. For now, let's dive in and talk about what we might want to do with a shot like this. And for the moment, let's assume that I've kind of done my basics. I've done my primaries. I'm happy with that basic grade. I feel like that's in a good place. And now I want to focus in on details. I want to focus in on my secondaries, which I have a dedicated uh, sort of branch of my node tree for down uh, in this lower sort of half of my node graph. And specifically what I wanna take a look at is the flowers back over here. I feel like the flowers are just a little bit oversaturated. I wanna bring them in just slightly. And that's the kind of thing that I often would pull a qualifier for early in my career. You go in, you eyedropper that region, you refine the key, maybe soften it out a little bit, and then you could pull some saturation out, pump some saturation in. If that's what you wanted to do, you have full control over just that region of your image that you've qualified. Instead, I wanna show you a different approach. All we're gonna do is go over to our curves and look at our hue versus sat curves. And I'm gonna zoom in onto this portion of the image and try to eyedropper a nice broad region within this flower, kind of wrap up all the different hues that are within it. And you can see I'm given these little goal posts as a result, and I can grab this middle point in between them and start to pull downward like so. So I'm starting to desaturate that flower. And one thing I'm often gonna pay attention to when I'm doing this exercise is I'll kind of overdo it and then just look at where the edges of my uh, hue boundary are and look at maybe opening things up a little bit just to make sure that I don't create any uh, breakage or kind of nasty behavior uh, in the course of making my adjustment. So something like that I think is gonna probably work better for me. And I'm just gonna check this edge as well. And especially because I'm not actually even going that far, I can feel really good about the sort of how clean this operation is. Let's now zoom out and take a look at the image on the whole. Now you can see I'm having some effect here on my skin. And I just wanna point out, I'm actually good with that. I'm okay with that. If anything, I can back this off if I wanna have slightly less effect on my skin. But that's one of the trade-offs. That's actually one of the benefits of working in this fashion is we're gonna get broader and softer results. You're gonna have influence on neighboring areas or neighboring hues, neighboring colors that you're trying to manipulate. And that's actually a good thing because it means that you're working nice and broad and soft. I'll take this 10 times out of 10 overseeing an edge or getting a chattery mat. No viewer is gonna know that my hue versus sat happens to be touching my subject's skin a little bit, but viewers notice all the time if there's a chattery edge, even if they don't notice consciously, they know something's not quite right with the image. So I would far prefer a broad adjustment that doesn't do anything uh, nasty to break the image or to create artifacts or tearing in it. So easy first example of swapping out a qualifier for a simple hue versus sat adjustment. It's having almost no effect anywhere in the image except exactly where I want it to. And yet it's also a nice, broad, soft adjustment that I don't have to babysit or worry about getting noise out of. Let's take a look at shot number two now and talk about another scenario, similar but different. In this case, as I look at the image, I really like what I see in this image. Same kind of thing. Let's assume that I'm pretty happy with my primaries, with my exposure, my ratio, my balance, all that good jazz. But what I'm seeing here that's kind of bugging me in this image are these traffic lights back here. And in fact, if I go deeper into this shot and look at the tail, we're gonna see a motorcycle come buzzing through here. And it's just at the bottom frame, but those lights are kind of hitting in that same kind of overly aggressive, overly garish red register for me. And I wanna pull those in, all right? Let's go back over here to the head of the shot. And we could start by doing a version of what we just did. And just say, all right, let's eyedropper this region within our hue versus sat and start to pull that down like so. 
Now, I'm going to need to go further with this because it is more oversaturated than in my prior scenario. And I have to say, in this case, I'm not so okay with the influence that is being had on neighboring areas. In particular, I feel like I'm kind of pulling the life out of my subject's skin. And we actually need to broaden this out a little bit. You can see there's kind of some blotching happening here. That's a result of being a little too narrow with my goalpost. So I need to broaden this out and make sure I'm getting a nice broad range uh, included inside of these goalposts, something like that, okay? I'm not afraid to go broad, by the way, as you can see. Broad beats soft, I'd rather go broad. And as I look at the image and if I feel like, all right, there are things happening in here that I don't want to see, then we can do something about that. And I wanna show you what in this case. In this case, I'm gonna break my own rule. We're actually gonna use a qualifier, but we're gonna use it in a broader, softer, simpler way than if we had just gone in and immediately pulled a key on that traffic light. So what's happening right now, if I look at, okay, I'm accomplishing my goal with the traffic lights. They're sitting in a much more pleasing kind of filmic register now. I just wanna limit the operation to the traffic lights as well as to those tail lights buzzing through my image here at the very tail of it, right? Which right now, it's hitting them fine. I just wanna limit the operation to only affect those things. Now, maybe I could do a power window or a couple of power windows and track those things. But in this case, I think the cleanest thing to do is gonna to be to complement this hue versus sat operation, which is nice and broad and soft, with a qualifier only on a single channel. So this is the first thing I wanna point out to you. You can use qualifiers well, or you can use qualifiers poorly. And the first sort of rule of thumb that you can think about with qualifiers is to use as few parameters as possible. So I will virtually never use all three of these, and I will generally try to stick to just one of them. And my preference for that one, if I can accomplish my goals with it, is to use the luminance channel or the luminance criteria because it's gonna to tend to be the cleanest of these three channels. So if we take a look here and say, what if we limit this operation by its luminance? I'm gonna flip into my highlight mode here and I'm gonna to go to the low adjustment here on my qualifier and just start to walk it in until I'm flagging this adjustment off. I mean, really the thing that I'm most concerned about is my subject's skin. I, don't, I, I'm, I would like to get this adjustment clear of most of the rest of the frame too, just in case, but it's really my subject's skin that I want to make sure is not receiving this adjustment because I don't like what it's doing to my subject's skin. So I'm gonna kind of find a sweet spot around here and then same thing, we're gonna go nice and soft, as soft as we possibly can without inadvertently including things that we were trying to take out in the first place. So something like this, and if I zoom out and turn my highlight mode off, you can see I'm now having a nice targeted effect here on the traffic lights. And if I look toward the tail, I should see the same thing here in the brake lights of uh, the bike over here. And in fact, maybe I need to adjust my luminance qualification because it does look like it's actually being excluded from the deal. So I'm gonna open this back up a little bit like so, and I may need to lower my softness. And let's now go back over here and make sure that my skin is not being included which it is, so I'm now gonna walk it back over. You can see it's kind of a balancing act, right? It takes a little more time, but the results are gonna be cleaner and softer. So I'm gonna find a decent balance here, and I'm gonna say, if I can clean up the traffic lights here, I can live with a little bit of a hotter register on those brake lights, okay? That's gonna be my trade-off. I'd rather work broad and soft. I'd rather keep this adjustment off of my subject's face, and in exchange for that, I can live with, at the very tail of the shot, these brake lights that are halfway in frame, remaining in that kind of higher, more saturated red register. I've done most of what I wanted to do, and I've done it cost-free. I've done it without damaging or creating artifacts or problems in my image, okay? So that's the idea there with shot number two. Let's take a look now at shot number three and talk about another way that these things can go. So here in shot number three, I've got a couple things that I wanna do. The first thing that I would like to do is tame in the luminance on these practical fixtures here inside of the environment. Now, I don't want to adjust the luminance on this nice daylight that's spilling in from outside. I kinda of wanna leave that where it's at. So, once again, my first move here could absolutely be to pull a qualifier, to go in an eyedropper and qualify for these fixtures, but instead I wanna try something slightly different. Instead, I'm gonna create a power window as a starting point because you'll notice these lights all live well below the level that I see here for uh, the light pouring in from the ceiling. So I'm gonna create a circular power window 
And what I'm going to do here is actually go to my control surface and set my aspect all the way up to 100 so that it's effectively a horizontal grad. And I'm going to confine whatever I'm going to do next down into this region so that we are well flagged off of the uh, daylight pouring in from the ceiling. And we've got plenty of softness happening there as well. And now I have a couple different things that I could do, but for starters, I could just go to my custom curves and I could zoom in on one of these fixtures and take my eyedropper and tap in there and see where I'm living with those, right? So now I can start to pull this in. You'll notice I've got my editable splines turned on to get a little bit more control. I'm gonna start pulling this one in as well, although that's affecting too much of the rest of my image, so I'm gonna leave that put. And just look at kind of finding a sweet spot for, I wanna delete this control point actually. And we're gonna just kind of try to find a sweet spot for bringing in these peak highlights. I'm holding down option to walk this control point a little bit further down the tone scale without actually moving anything. And let's just keep refining this until we feel like we're starting to affect these peak highlights. Now, this is probably gonna be a little bit tough to view over YouTube, but I'm getting the result that I want here. I'm starting to tame these in, and I'm gonna go a little bit further than I might in an actual grade just to make it easy to see. So something like that is gonna be a good start for sort of taming those in. And you can see I'm starting to kind of get a little bit more shape into those. I also wanna explore another idea. Let's say we don't wanna do this curves adjustment because we want to have a little bit more control over what we're doing here. And we actually would like to add a little bit of blurring into these areas as well to soften them out even further. So let's wipe this out. And once again, contemplate using a qualifier in tandem with a power window. So I'm gonna to go to my luminance channel once again, turn on my highlight mode and just qualify that zone. Look how easily those qualified just with this one luminance qualifier. I'm not touching either of these criteria. And I'm again gonna go as soft as I can stand, as soft as I can go without introducing things into the image that I don't wanna see. And then maybe choke that in a little bit further like so. And now I've got control not only over my intensity on these fixtures, like so, I'm now pulling my gain in, but I've actually got the ability to blur these areas as well. So let's kind of zoom in here, see how we're doing, and let's go over to our, uh, not RGB mixer, but our blur over here. And let's start to look at increasing the radius of our blur. And even at this level, you can see, I still need to soften out this qualifier even further, or maybe I just need to move its low point a little bit like that. So how about that? I'm making a really nuanced adjustment just to those sconces. And maybe I'm getting a little too soft because you can see I actually am affecting the areas below the fixtures in terms of their luminance. So again, this is that kind of push pull, that, that part you need to feel your way through. That effectively means I've gone too soft with my softness. I said, as soft as I can afford to go, right? So I'm gonna keep adjusting this softness until when I flip this on and off, I only see a change in the area of the image that I expect to. And then in sort of uh, tandem with that, I'm gonna look at bringing that low point up because I really don't want to include some of that stained glass window that's in there. So it's more of an iterative and uh, sort of feel driven process than just slamming a qualifier or pulling a quick key and starting to make adjustments. We really wanna be more nuanced than that. And it takes a little bit more time, but the results tend to be better. So if we take a look at where we are now, we've got a nice, really soft key that we've pulled here. We're flagging off any of this daylight from coming into the equation. And in fact, maybe I can even sweeten the deal a little bit more and bring this down. And let's just see what happens if with the frame in terms of its motion. That's all gonna be totally fine. If I wanted to, I could track or manually animate this window so that by the time we're here, it's moved down to the bottom of the frame. Uh, but in this case, you get the idea. All that we've done is create in a really, really broad, soft way, this adjustment on those lights without needing to pull a narrow qualifier and worry about, worry about blurring the key and all the stuff that tends to uh, attend qualifiers. So I hope this starts to kind of like open up your mind a little bit to the possibilities of choosing an alternative to a qualifier or using the qualifier in partnership with other tools, allowing you to pull a gentler qualifier because we used the qualifier in two of our three examples today, but we only had to use a single channel of the qualifier. It happened to be the cleanest of the three channels, the luminance channel. And by simply partnering that with an HSL curves or a power window adjustment, 
we're getting a much broader, softer result that we need to feel our way to a little bit more. But once we have, we don't have to babysit this adjustment in the same way as if we had uh, initially pulled a three channel qualifier using our eyedropper. So hope you find that interesting. I talk about qualifiers all the time, usually to talk trash on them, as I said. And I wanna be clear, I use qualifiers all the time as well, but I use them more in this fashion than in the traditional drop an eyedropper on there and start making uh, really hard adjustments uh, type of workflow that uh, you'll see a lot that you're honestly tempted to use because of the way the qualifier is presented to us. So this is a more nuanced, more interesting, more filmic way of employing qualifiers in my opinion. And I'm excited to go even deeper on this subject in uh, our YouTube Live uh, grade school that we're gonna be doing uh, this Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific, where we're gonna spend the full hour talking about qualifiers and further exploring how we can get the absolute best results out of them and ensure that we're doing absolutely no damage to our image. Looking forward to seeing you then.